Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Undaunted Normandy. At this point, we have played through one full round of the game, and if you missed the tutorial video where I went through that round and taught all of the rules to the game, you can find a link for it down below in the description or by clicking the I up in the top corner. Now, just like before, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I really might make mistakes as we are playing, and I like these playthroughs to be as accurate as possible so I can put corrections there on the screen. Okay, let's jump back in. Okay, we're picking things up in the Determine Initiative step of the second round of the game. And that means we have to choose one of these cards to not play, and then we will figure out if the number is bigger than our opponents. Now, at the moment, we moved our scout in, so we're a little bit close to our opponents. And we know that there's no way they can have one of these Riflemen B in their hand, and we also know they already used their Gunner A. Now, they have not used their Rifleman A or the Rifleman C, and both of those are relatively close to the scout. So part of me feels like it would be good to try and get a better initiative than the Germans so that maybe we could just try to shoot in from our Rifleman B to try and take them out, although I suppose they're going to have a pretty good defense at that point. Either way, I think we do want to use the Scout to recon away this Fog of War, and I like the idea of using the Platoon Sergeant to bolster for three, so I figure let's put the Squad Leader B down, and that will give us a seven for determining our initiative. After looking at their options, the German player is going to put this down, and we can now reveal both of these, and it looks like for the second turn in a row, they have played a Fog of War card for initiative. Now, it is worth noting that the German player started with none of their scouts in play, so that means they currently have no way to get rid of Fog of War cards, so it kind of makes sense for them to not worry about initiative as much and to try to maximize the number of actions they get on their turn. Either way, our 7 is certainly higher than 1, so both of these will be discarded, and we will keep the initiative, and now it's time for step 3, where we can start taking actions. I figure let's go ahead and start by playing our Scout B, and we will do a recon action. That lets us permanently remove this Fog of War from the game. We can put it right over here face up, because we can always go in and look to see what's there. Of course, our opponent won't see it. If this was an actual game, we would have this face down. But now we can draw one card from the top of the deck as part of that recon ability. So now we have these two options, and that's funny. We have another Fog of War. I suppose that we had just one card left over, so we probably could have seen that coming. But either way, uh, we now can uh, use this Platoon Sergeant's ability, and considering we are about to reshuffle, I figure let's do a bolster action to put some more cards back in here, potentially giving us the ability to get multiple cards of the same type in our hand. Now we can pick up three of these, and I do like the idea of this platoon guide. They can bolster extra cards into our deck, and they give us a lot of flexibility for moving these tokens around, so let's make this one of them. And for the next one, I figure maybe let's take a Scout B and a Rifleman B for, I guess, the second and third card. The reason for that is because currently the Germans have targeted their mortar on the spot, so if we have a couple of those cards in our deck, we will have flexibility to move them out quicker. Maybe we could get two Rifleman Bs to actually jump all the way over to a spot that is slightly more defended and get it into the town faster. So I think that is a pretty good plan. We could, of course, also pick up a Sniper or a Mortar of our own, but I think we should be proactive about trying to get away from this target to at least slow down the Germans' ability to really hit us hard by having these consolidated tokens. So let's pick up the Scout B and this Rifleman B, and it's worth noting there are just three of each Scout, so there's only one more of these left over. And having extra Scouts is not a bad thing because we can use them to scout the board as well as get rid of Fog of War, and we can also put more Fog of War in our opponent's deck with this Conceal ability, and that's particularly good considering they currently have no Scouts, so they are going to be behind the ball at trying to get those out of their deck. So let's add these into our discard pile, and at this point we are done with our actions because we just have this Fog of War in our hand, so we can discard that as well as all of the cards that we played, and now the German player can take their actions. They're going to start with a Rifleman C control action. Now the Rifleman C token is right down here, and they can control the spot because currently none of their enemies are over here, we are just way far away. Now they control this zone, which means they now have one objective point, and again the game will end immediately once one of the players has seven of those points. So they're kind of working their way up to it, and they're probably hoping to do this now so that they can then move this token out and just leave that controlled in the back. Next up, they're going to play their second Machine Gunner A card. They started the game with two of these in their deck, and with this, they are going to attack our scout. Now, our defense is 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so that's going to be 8 total, and they get to roll two dice with this Machine Gun attack. It looks like they rolled a 2 and a 1, so that did not go very well for them. So far, luck has certainly been on our side. But now for their last action of the round, they're going to play their second Mortar card, and with this, they are going to Blast. Now again, you can only blast when you have a target out, and it will hit everything on that given location, so their target is currently over here. Now they are on a hill, and if you remember, when you target from one hill to another, then the defense for that region is the small number, which is 1. If you attack up the hill from anywhere else, then the defense would be 3. 
So we can zoom in over here for this blast attack, and it's now time to calculate our defense. Now it's worth noting that this blast attack does not have any range defense bonuses for us, because obviously mortars are built to fire from a very long range, and they're going to roll this die for each one of the attacks, and they'll start with a scout. Now our defense is 5 plus 1, because they are attacking us from another hill, so that means on a 6 or better, this is a casualty, and unfortunately they hit a 6. This means we will take a Scout B casualty, and we first check our hand, but we don't have a hand of cards because we were first in initiative. So next up, we can check our discard pile looking for a Scout B. It's right here, and that is going to be permanently removed from the game for this casualty, and then the blast attack is going to hit the Rifleman. Their defense is 4 plus 1 or 5, so that's really not looking too good for us, and they rolled another 6. So just like before, that means a casualty is going to be inflicted. This was a pretty devastating mortar attack, and we have to find a Rifleman B in our uh, discard pile, and we can then remove this from the deck, so that was a very impactful blast action by the Germans. With that completed, they are now done with their actions, so they can discard all of these cards, and we can now go into the next round. The first thing we do is draw four cards, but currently we have no deck. That means we can go ahead and shuffle up our discard pile to make the new deck. Uh, unfortunately, we are two cards lighter after that mortar attack over here, but these will be the four cards that we're going to play with. And then over here, the German player has three cards currently in their deck, so that's three cards for their hand, and then they get to reshuffle up their deck, and they will pull one of these cards out to finish out their hand. And then we can move into the Determine Initiative step. Now, looking at our hand, we have a 7, a 6, a 5, and a 1. Now, the Fog of War is certainly not great, and unfortunately... Oh, wait, no, we do have a Scout. So I like the idea of keeping the Fog of War so that we can recon that out of our deck so we don't have to keep worrying about it. We will get more Fog of War, but I think the leaner our deck is, as far as these uh, clunky cards are concerned, the better things will be for us. Now, we should look at our other options here. We have the Rifleman A and a Squad Leader A. And we can then come out here and look at our options. And I do like the idea of doing this combo as part of our actions. So that's going to leave these two over here as uh, things we have to pick for the initiative. If we picked the squad leader, then the initiative number would be high. And that means we could potentially do some damage with the Rifleman A over onto maybe this gunner position or this Rifleman A on that spot. Uh, that way we could potentially remove a card from the German player's hand if we are successful with this attack. It looks like the defense for that would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so not great odds overall, but instead if we just put this Rifleman out for a 5 on the initiative, we could use the squad leader to bolster twice with the A squad right over here. Now I do like the idea of that. We could get more Rifleman A cards, or we could get a machine gunner, which means we could maybe uh, spawn right over here where the A is, and try to machine gun back over here, or maybe even at the mortar. So I think with that in mind, let's go ahead and use this uh, Rifleman for the initiative. And of course, at the same time, the Germans were thinking about what card to play as well, and we can now reveal them, and our 5 is not going to beat this 7. So that means the Germans will now have the initiative, and they can now start taking their actions first, and both of these cards will be discarded. And they're going to start simply with this Rifleman A, and they'll do a control action on this area. So they can flip this over, and they now have one, two objective points out of the 7 that they need. And they've decided to start by playing out this platoon sergeant, and they will do the command action, which lets them draw two cards from the top of their deck, and they can add those right into their hand. The next thing they will do is activate their Rifleman A to do a control action, and that means they can flip over the scouting token, and they now have two objectives towards the seven that they need. And after this, they will do a move action with their Rifleman C. Now that's right over here, and they can only go onto scouted or, of course, controlled spots, so that means their only option to move is right over here. And then for their next action, they will play their squad leader A, and they're going to bolster twice on the A squad. Now it looks like they've decided to just pick up two of these A scouts. They had no scouts, and they are really worried about these Fog of Wars potentially uh, clogging up their deck. They currently only have two of them, I suppose, but they also really need to be able to scout more regions so that they can be more flexible out here with their riflemen. So both of these will get added into their discard pile. And they are now done with their action. They have one card left in their hand, which is a Fog of War, and they can discard the rest of these, and now we get to go. And the first thing I think we should do is play our Scout to recon this Fog of War permanently out of our game. Now we can put this way over to the side, and now we can draw another card from the top of our deck. And we found the Scout B. Now we have a Squad Leader A as an option as well, and I think for the moment let's play Scout B for its scouting action. We can see that Scout B is all the way in the north where the mortar fire is landing, and they're just going to move twice over here, I think. 
That way we can have Scout A heading over here to try and scout this town out more, and maybe Scout B could potentially threaten the mortar site and also try to get over here. This is also two of the objective points, which would be a very good thing for us. Now we're not going to add any more scouting tokens because we started the game with quite a bit of knowledge of the terrain, so that's going to finish out this action. And this is going to leave us with one card left, which is the Squad Leader A. Now, I think let's inspire one of the A Squad cards back, and that is going to be this Scout A that we already played. And then I think let's just go ahead and do an attack. We've got a couple of the enemies quite close by, and let's try to hit the Rifleman B. We haven't seen that come out of the blue player's deck just yet, and so that means if we are successful, maybe we pull it out of the deck, and they won't be able to use that to take control of this area and claim this as an objective. So let's calculate up their defense, and they have 4 plus 1 for the area, and then plus 1 for the range. That means we need a 6 or better to be successful, and we got a 10. Uh, so you are always successful on a 10, no matter what the defense is. So that means we have successfully inflicted a casualty on Rifleman B. Which means the Germans first check their hand, but they don't have one. And then they can check their discard pile, and it looks like they do not have any Rifleman Bs in here. So now they have to go into their deck, and it looks like that one is right here. So they would have had that on their next turn. So this is permanently removed from the game, and then they can reshuffle up their deck. And that's going to finish out our action phase. So we can discard all of these. And then we can go into the next round where we can draw four more cards. So we have just one more card left on our deck right here. And then, of course, the Germans draw four. And we can now pick which of these cards will go towards our initiative. Now, this is a pretty powerful hand. We have Squad Leader B, we have a Platoon Guide, and a Rifleman B. And that means if we use all three of these, we could move or activate this Rifleman B essentially three times. We could move them, we could use the Platoon Guide to move them again, and then we could use the Inspire ability to activate that Rifleman over here, and we can then control this area, getting ourselves two objective points. Now, that's going to require all of these cards, so I think we should use our Platoon Sergeant as our initiative, and that is a 9, which is pretty high. So I think overall, this is looking to be a pretty strong turn for us. After considering their options, the Germans are going to use this card for initiative. We can flip these over, and they played an 8 with their platoon guide. Now that means our 9 is actually better. They were not expecting that. So we now take the initiative back right over here. Both of these can then be discarded, and now we can take our actions. And I'm pretty sure we have already figured out what we're doing on this turn. We can start off with the Rifleman B, and that has a move of one. So they can head right over here onto this scouted area, and we now have nobody over here where this target is. So I certainly uh, like not having that threatening us so much. This is now played out, and we can now use the Platoon Guide to guide any one token. So that is a move for any token of our choice, and we can then guide this Rifleman B right over here because this is scouted. And now we can inspire one of the B squad back. So that's going to be this Rifleman B right back into our hand. And now let's go ahead and control the spot. We can do this because none of the opponents are over here. So this is now flipped over, and we now have two objective points which means we're tied with the two of our opponent, and each of us now needs five more to win. That's going to finish out our actions, so we can discard all of these cards, and now the German player can play. Their first card is not looking good for us. This is a Machine Gunner A. Now that is right down over here, and they have decided to target our Rifleman B. Now our defense is 4 plus 1 plus 2, so that means we have a defense of 7, but of course they will roll 2 dice with this machine gun attack, so if they get a 7 or better, then that is going to inflict a casualty. They did get one of those, so that is enough, and that means we will lose one of our Rifleman B cards. And since we don't have a hand, we have to check our discard pile, and the Rifleman B is right here. And it was so successful last round, but it's now starting to take fire because it really did get right there under the nose of the enemies. That's going to finish out that action, but unfortunately, they now reveal another Machine Gunner A. Now, they're going to do the exact same thing, trying to target this Rifleman B again. So our defense is 7, and they roll 2 dice, and they got a 6 and a 3. Well, that worked out pretty well for us. We have just barely dodged taking another casualty, and I'm pretty sure we don't have any Rifleman B cards in our deck anymore. So uh, that means we would have lost the token entirely, which would have certainly been a big blow to us. Either way, the Machine Gunner missed this time, which I like seeing. And now they're going to play their last card, and it is the Mortar. Now, we have cleared out of their current target spot, but they've decided to use this to do a target action again. And they're just going to move the target right over here, where we are once again consolidated into the spot. So this is starting to become a pretty dangerous part of the board. That's going to finish out their actions, so they can discard all of these cards. And let's move into the next round. At the moment, we have one card to draw, so we now need three more. So let's go ahead and shuffle up our discard pile. Then we can finish drawing out our hand, and then over here, the German player has three cards, so that means they get to reshuffle up their discard pile as well. 
That's going to finish out their hand, and we can now figure out initiative. So let's take a look at our options. Now we have a Scout B, a Scout A, our Platoon Sergeant, and a Fog of War. Now, every time we've picked up a Fog of War in the past, we have been reconning these out of our deck, but that also leaves us with a question mark. We don't know what new card we would draw. Now, I really don't like the idea of getting rid of this Platoon Sergeant because I think we really should start bolstering back up. In particular, we should get more Riflemen Bs because they've been hit a lot, and I think we should try and get some Mortars. Obviously, this is a pretty big threat, being able to lob damage from so far away on so many of these units, and our Mortar would spawn right over here. Now, that means we could go one, two, three, and all of these positions, uh, including this one right here, would be vulnerable to our mortar fire. So I think the earlier we get that going is probably going to be the better for us. Now, what that means is we do have to choose one of these cards, so we don't want to choose this one, and, well, we could do the Fog of War, but my concern is that this target is right over here, and we might get fired upon before our next turn. If that happened and it was successful, it wouldn't hit our hand. In particular, if we keep our Scout A, and if it gets hit, we would then lose that from our hand, and we would lose the entire action. So we could, of course, keep Scout A, and then maybe use the Scout B for the initiative, and then we could use Scout A to move. If we were able to come in first, if 6 is going to be good enough, then at least that would be maybe only one of our units that gets hit. And if we get to go first, then we would have hopefully bolstered into being able to absorb it. Of course, the mortar fire might not actually be successful, but I think this is probably a decent plan for us. I'd love to be able to recon this Fog of War out, but I just think that's a little bit too slow considering how in the woods we are over here. And it's also worth noting that we have to scout out these new locations before we can actually control them. Right now, we have only one spot that's scouted that has these points on it and we need five more so moving the scout into these two spots would really open up our possibilities for trying to control with the rifleman so i think with all of that being said we're going to select the scout b for the initiative and then the German player will choose this one, and we can reveal, and they played another Fog of War. So our six is easily good enough, so we can discard both of these, and now let's start taking our actions. The first thing we should do is scout, and as I already said, I think this is going to be the best path for us. We can of course scout twice, and that is going to put a scouting token on each of these spots. So now we can bring our riflemen in, which is a really good thing. That's uh, four more potential objective points that we can vie for. Unfortunately, when we put these tokens down, we do add the Fog of War to our deck. So that is going to be two of these that go into our deck right now. And at this point, we can now play one of these two cards. Obviously, we can't play the Fog of War. So let's play the Platoon Sergeant for our Bolster 3. And as I talked about before, I think we should get the Mortaring online. Now, we also want a Rifleman B, and the next question is, do we take another Rifleman B, or do we take another Mortar? If we have two of these in our deck, then I suppose we could be able to target and then fire quicker, and if our uh, enemies don't actually move, we could keep firing over and over again faster like that. So I think, yeah, I've talked myself into it. Let's take another one of these Mortar cards. And these can get added into our discard pile. We are done with our actions now, so we can discard this Fog of War from our hand, and now the German player can take actions. The first thing they're going to play is a mortar, and they are going to blast on their target spot. Uh, I guess it's a good thing we were able to run out of there with our scout, and that means they're just going to hit this Rifleman B. Now, their defense will be 4 plus 1, and again, there is no range benefit for our defense because this is a mortar attack. So that means on a 5 or better, they will do a casualty. Well, that's certainly better than a 5. That is a 9. And that means we can go into our discard pile and immediately take the Rifleman B that we just bolstered in, and that will now be permanently taken out of the game. I like the fact that we were able to get these objective points for now, but we are certainly taking a lot of casualties being so close to all of these enemies. That's going to finish out their Mortar action. Next up, they're going to play their Scout A card, and since the Scouting A token is off to the side of the board, they can now bring this right onto the A spawn point, and now they have some good options. Uh, they could have, they could recon, potentially. They might have a Fog of War in their hand. They might conceal. They could scout or attack. All of these are good, and they've decided that scouting is probably the thing they should do. Uh, they have now uh, claimed at least two out of the three objectives they started with, and they figure with this, they can now scout up here and then down there, and that means they can put both of these tokens down and they are in a position to potentially vie for these two points here and this one point over there. Uh, they do like the idea of doing some damage, but they figure being proactive to get these tokens down is a good idea. But of course, they will take two more Fog of War cards, and they will add those into their discard pile. They have one card left, and it looks like it's a Fog of War, so they're actually going to stop their turn. And they really did consider doing a recon for that, but they figured getting that scouting action done as soon as possible is probably in their best interest. At this point, we have now finished out the round, so both of us can draw the top four cards from our deck. 
So let's see what we have right here. We have exactly four cards, actually. So in this case, we have our squad leader B, we've got our platoon guide, we've got the rifleman A, as well as the squad leader A. So that's a lot of possibilities for some pretty good turns here. And in fact, when we look out here, we could do a similar blitz turn to what we did a few rounds ago to get Rifleman B out onto the spot to claim this. Now, it's not been too great for the Rifleman B since that happened, but being able to claim this one right before the Germans can come in here seems like a really good idea. Remember, if they get in here with a token, then we cannot take control of it until we kill off that token. So having the uh, impetus to get in there early is good. The problem is that we cannot be sure if we will have the initiative to pull that off. In order to do that, we would need to use this squad leader uh, uh, B right here and it has an initiative of seven, which is pretty good, but we cannot be sure if it's going to pull it off. But I figure, let's go ahead and try. If this works out, then that's going to be two more objectives that we have uh, at the moment. Of course, our enemy, our opponents, could get rid of our objectives if they work in there. But the sooner we get these, the better, because it's quite hard to actually turn those over. You have to do a lot of successful battles. So yeah, let's use this one and hope that we can maintain the initiative. So let's see what the German player picked, and it is a Rifleman. Now that has an initiative of five, and we have seven, so that worked out pretty well for us. Both of these can be discarded, and we do get to go first, so I'm really glad that worked out in our favor. So let's take our actions and do that familiar blitz to try and head into town. Then we can start with the Rifleman A. We can move once with that one, and then we can do the Platoon Guide. That gives us a guide to move any of these tokens. We can move this right in over here, and then we can play the Inspire 1A from the squad leader to pull the Rifleman back, and then Rifleman A will control this spot. So we have zoomed in right over here, and we now have 2 plus 2, or 4 of the objective points. Again, we need 7, so we're not quite there yet, but we're certainly building up a nice pile of objectives. We are, of course, right next to a bunch of enemies, but I think this is the name of the game. We have to try and get these to win, and being super defensive over here on this hill is just not going to do it for us. That's going to finish out all of our actions, so now Germany can go. They're going to start by playing the first sniper action of the game, and this means they can bring the sniper token out, and they can put it on the spawn point for it. And now they are going to do an attack three, and they're going to hit our rifleman A. Now our defense is currently four plus one plus two for the distance which means we have a defense of seven, but unfortunately the sniper gets to roll three dice. So on a seven or better on any of these, they will get a hit and they got one. Uh, so that nine is going to do it and we will take casualties on our rifleman A. So let's go into our discard pile and find it and it's right there. So unfortunately, Richard Johnson is no more. That's going to finish their sniping action and the next card they have decided to play is this machine gunner. Our defense is 4 plus 1 plus 1, so that's only 6. And this machine gun nest, of course, gets to roll 2 dice. So a 6 or better on either of these will do it. And man, this is pretty rough. They got a 7. That means we will take a casualty. And at the moment, if we look at our discard pile, we don't have any more of the Rifleman A. So unfortunately, that is going to remove this token from the board. And we can then put it over here into our supply. We can bring this back as soon as we play another Rifleman A. And as you can see, we have quite a few of them. I think maybe we should have been bolstering into some more of these Riflemen. Maybe we've been uh, playing this game a little bit too fast and loose trying to get into that town. But either way, that's going to finish out this machine gunner action. So for their last action, they're going to play their platoon guide, and they will guide this Rifleman A right onto this spot. So we were able to take control of it, but right away they are threatening to flip this one back over. Now they will need to control this one twice in order to take these objective points, and hypothetically we could get one of our tokens back in over here. But I think at this point we need to start focusing on doing a lot more damage to the Germans. Alright, they are done with their actions, so they can now discard all of these cards. And we can now go into the next round. Each of us will draw four cards from the top of our deck. At this moment, we have no cards in our deck, so we can shuffle up our discard pile. And then we can draw the top four. Let's go ahead and look at our options, and we do have one Fog of War in our hand. We were able to pull both of our mortars, that's some pretty good luck. And then down here we have the Platoon Sergeant. Now, this is a really good way to start bolstering back in some more of these riflemen. I think maybe we need to focus on that a little bit, but I think we definitely want to keep both of these mortars because we can then spawn over here and target and then blast with the other one. At the moment, there are two of the German riflemen clustered up over here, so I think that's a pretty good target. And as much as I hate to say it, I think we should probably just play the Fog of War. It's possible the German player might also play Fog of War, in which case we would tie, and we would win the tie, but I think it's just really important for us to get all of these actions in, even if it means, well, maybe this uh, rifleman B will be removed as a casualty before we can take our turn. 
After considering their options, the German player is going to go with this squad leader. That means they have an initiative of 7 to our 1, so they are certainly going to get to go first. We can now discard both of these cards, and Germany can take those actions. The first thing they're going to do is play out their platoon sergeant, and instead of bolstering, they are going to command twice. This means they can draw the top two cards from the deck, and they can add those right into their hand. And their next card is going to be this Rifleman A, which is going to control right over here. So our Gambit is not really panning out for us, it looks like. This is going to get flipped over, so now nobody controls this. We are back to just two of these objective points, and the German player is still at two as well. But if they're able to control again soon, they could take these two points for themselves. Next up, they're going to play their Scout A card, and they will do a Scout 2 action. With this, they will move once onto this spot, and then once right over here, and that means they have now scouted out this location, and hypothetically, they have enough scouting tokens out here to get to the seven that they need. Right now, they of course only have two objective points, but if they were able to get the rest of the ones that they have out here, that would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's even one more than they would actually need to win the game. They're of course getting a little ahead of themselves, they still have just two points, they have to cash in these points, but uh, it's looking pretty good for them. Obviously starting here in the town gave them a distinct advantage, and maybe we're not doing the best job at mitigating that as we're playing through and just rushing in at the town. Their next action will be a squad leader A, and they are going to bolster twice on A, and simply take two more of these Rifleman A cards and put them into their discard pile. Germany has one more card to play, and they are going to blast with this mortar. The target is currently on the spot with the Rifleman B, and our defense is 4 plus 1. So that means on a 5 or better, this will be successful, and they got a 2! Alright, well that worked out pretty well in our favor. Rifleman B is going to uh, keep hanging on here in the northern parts of the town. They are now done with their rather large turn, so they can discard all of these cards, and now we get to take our actions. For our first action, let's go ahead and play the Mortar down. As soon as we play this, that will spawn this token onto the Mortar spawn spot, and now we can do a target action. Now I think we have two good options. I was thinking about going over here so we could uh, blast on the same turn and try to do some damage to these two Rifleman types, but instead we could shoot from this hill all the way over to this hill. Uh, we could try to take out this mortar position, and right now their target is not over here. So we would actually be in a good spot to try and uh, deal with this. Right now we know that the Germans have two of those mortar cards in their deck. If we were able to inflict two casualties, that would stop them from doing any more damage with it. Now they could bolster a, another one of those mortars into their deck, but I suppose if we start removing those cards, they will become a lot less efficient with it anyway. Now I think this is maybe the better idea. I do like the idea of hitting this, but since we our second in initiative, it's not like we might be able to pull a, a card out of our opponent's hand in order to make them take less actions. We do have a couple of those mortar cards, so we could change this relatively quickly if we wanted to. So yeah, let's go for this. Let's try to target this mortar. At this point, we can now play our other card, and it's now time to blast over here. We are going to be shooting from one hill to the other, and that means the defense right over here is a 1 instead of a 3. This is another reason I think we should do this, because if we tried to get up here, uh, maybe with a scout, we would have to, of course, get right on top of it to negate that bonus over here. So let's do that blast, which means we roll one die, and we need to hit a five or better, and we got a five. All right, that worked out pretty well. Germany has to take a casualty, and they will look into their discard pile, and they can pull this mortar out and permanently remove it from the game. The next thing we can do is play this platoon sergeant, and we are certainly going to bolster for three. Now, this Rifleman B has been hanging on right out here, and I like the idea of keeping them alive on this spot. So I think maybe we just take three of them? Oh, there's only two of them left. So let's bolster both of these, and we can take one more card. And you know what? We're kind of investing in our mortar technology here. Let's take the third and final one of these cards so that we have three of those knocking around inside of our deck, and we can really change the target around and try to do as much blasting as we can on the Germans. That's going to finish out our turn, so we can discard these cards. Let's now start the next round off by drawing cards. The German player only has one card, so they can go ahead and shuffle up their discard pile and then keep drawing. And then over here we can draw our four cards. And now we can figure out what card we're going to use for the initiative. We got one of the Fog of War, but we do have a Scout. Now I like the idea of trying to get this one out with a Recon action. We could then draw another card and try to keep going. Right now the Scout B is over there, and I suppose we could use that to try and shoot over here. Although, actually when we look here we have a Scout Leader B. That means we could use this Scout B to go ahead and do this Recon action, and then we could potentially inspire that Scout B back and then shoot. 
We could also use this to bolster twice on B and maybe pick up some of these machine guns. <laughs> that one gunner spot right here has done a lot of damage to us overall. So I think this is probably something we want to keep. And I suppose we'll use the squad leader A for our initiative. This is the card the German player picked, and they have used a Fog of War. So our 7 is definitely going to be to 1. That means we have initiative, and we can now start taking our actions. Let's start by playing this Scout B for the Recon ability. We can then get rid of this Fog of War permanently, and now we can draw another card. This one is a Scout A. And I figure, let's go ahead and attack this gunner's nest. We've been leaving them here all game long, and they've just been shooting us like crazy. I think we certainly should have done maybe a little bit more damage to the Germans before just running in like we did. I am starting to worry that we might be in a pretty bad position here, but uh, in order to claw back, let's definitely try to do damage where we can. Now we can see here that the gunner's defense is 4 plus 1 plus 1 for the range, so that means we need to hit a 6 or better, and we got a 7. Awesome, that worked out pretty well, so we can do a casualty on gunner A. So the German player has to check their hand, and they do indeed have a Gunner A in their hand. So this worked out really well for us. We got initiative on them. We have now destroyed this card, and they will have less actions on their turn. We now have just this squad leader B in our hand, and part of me wants to inspire this scout B back and then try to do another damage to the gunners. We know the Germans only have two of those cards, and we could see that would be four, five, six, seven. So we'd have to hit a seven or better to make that work from there. Another really good option is bolstering for two. Now we could pick up a couple of these machine guns and we could set them up on top of that hill and we could roll really well, especially if we want to use the suppressing fire to roll all four of these dice down into the city. That could work out pretty well for us and I am starting to regret not getting some of these more powerful units earlier in the game. But now I think we should do it. So yeah, let's go ahead and play this out and pick up two of these machine gunner bees. And that's going to finish out our turn. So now the Germans can take their actions. And it looks like they're going to start by playing a Mortar card. And instead of blasting this spot again, they know we have a couple more of these cards in our deck. They're just going to play the target, and they're going to change the position back over here. So we essentially have both of the Mortars firing back and forth at each other from these hills. Germany has one more card, but they reveal it's a Fog of War, and they're going to pass for their actions. So they only got to do one thing this turn, and I think that worked out pretty well for us. Okay, let's now go into the next round, so we can draw four cards from the top of our decks. And it looks like we have two, so we have to reshuffle. And these will be our next two cards. Let's now look at our cards, and we have our Platoon Sergeant, our Platoon Guide, a Fog of War, and a Rifleman. Now that's going to work out, I think, relatively well for us. We unfortunately don't have any scouts, but I think we should keep the Platoon Sergeant so that we can play the Command 2, and then we could draw two cards, and there is a reasonable chance we'd bump into a scout. That would let us recon this Fog of War out of our hand, and we would then get even deeper into our deck. And I like the idea of using the command anyway, just to cycle through our deck faster, because we know that we have some really good stuff in there now. And the sooner we see them, the better we can be with being proactive against the Germans. Now, I think we should probably keep Rifleman B as well. I suppose if we just played the Fog of War for the initiative, we would have a really strong hand here. But the uh, German player would be almost for sure going to take the initiative away from us. Uh, we've seen them play a few of these Fog of Wars, and we just cannot rely on them tying with us for this so i think let's get rid of the platoon guide for the initiative that is eight which is very strong and then after looking at their options the german player decided to play this scout out that has an initiative of six but our eight beats that so that means we keep this token we can discard these cards and let's go ahead and start taking our actions the first thing we should definitely do is play this platoon sergeant for the command two. That will let us draw two cards and that will increase our options. So we should see this sooner rather than later. And we found a scout. Awesome. That is going to work out pretty well. We can now play this scout A out and we can recon this fog of war out of our hand. And then we can draw another card. And this one is a squad leader for A. Well, that means we can actually inspire the scout back into our hand if we wanted to. Or we could bolster twice on A. So those are some pretty good options. And then over here we have two rifleman Bs. Let's now come out to the map, and I think with this hand, we should do something about this gunner. We could shoot it twice with our Rifleman B, but I think instead, let's go ahead and use the Squad Leader A, and we can inspire once to bring this Scout A back, and let's just attack with the Scout A. They're one space closer than the Rifleman B is, so their odds are slightly better, and if this doesn't work, we still have a couple Rifleman Bs in our back pocket. So let's figure out the defense. The gunner has four, and then there's one for the terrain, and then the range is one. So that's four plus one plus one, or six. So that means we will roll one die, and we need a six or better, and we got a three. 
Well, that's unfortunate considering we played a card to make that happen, but we still have those Rifleman Bees in our hand, so I think let's now go ahead and play one of those and try to make this happen. Now the defense has gone up by one, I believe. That's four, five, six, seven. So we have to hit a seven or better to make this happen, and we got a three. Man, that is rough. This was looking like a pretty good turn, but now I'm starting to be a bit concerned. Now, I think we have this one left over, and the odds are not necessarily in our favor, but I really think we want to try and take these gunners out. So we're just going to go for it. That's three cards played to make this happen, and hopefully we'll hit a seven or better this time, and we got a ten. All right, well, that's always a hit, no matter what the defense is. So we have now inflicted one casualty on the gunner A. So the German player has to find that. It's not in their hand. They can look over here to their discard pile, and it's not in there. So now they can look here. <laughs> it was actually at the bottom of their deck. So this is now permanently removed from their deck, and they can go ahead and shuffle up their deck. And that's going to finish out our rather large turn. I suppose a couple of those actions didn't do a lot for us, but, you know, this is Warfare, and we're trying to shoot across over through this building right here, so I guess it just took a couple uh, shots to actually take out that Gunner's Nest. Now, I suppose it is still there on the map. We know that they have no more cards in their deck because we can see that they have one of these left in their supply, and they could bolster this in and then use this again, but for now, I'm feeling pretty good about that turn, even though it was slightly less efficient than I was hoping. The German player can now take actions, and they're going to use their Rifleman C to do a control action. We can see they're right over here, so they can flip this over, and they now have one, two, three out of seven when it comes to these objective points. And the next thing they're going to do is play their sniper. Now, they could shoot with it, but for the moment, they're not feeling super pressured, so they're going to use this opportunity to do the stalk action, and that means they can move forward onto any spot, whether or not it is scouted, and they're going to go right here, trying to increase their odds of getting hits out on all of our troops that are coming this way. Lastly, they're going to play their Scout A, and they thought about concealing, but they figure right now, since they're in the same spot as one of our units, they should probably attack. Now, they can attack with one die, and our defense is 5 plus 1 or 6. Obviously, there is no range bonus because we are on the same location, so that means they need a 6 or better, and they got a 7. Dang, that is going to inflict a casualty on the Scouts. And we can see it's right here on top of our discard pile, so this can be removed permanently from the game. That's going to finish out their actions, so they can now discard all of these cards. Let's keep on moving forward into the next round. We can draw four cards from the top of our deck, and so will our opponents. We can now look at our cards, and I'm not sure who shuffled this deck, but we ended up getting both Machine Gun Bs and both of the Mortars. Now, unfortunately, our initiative is not looking great for this round. It's either going to be a 2 or a 3, and when we play a Machine Gunner, it's going to spawn right up here on the B spot. It would have probably been better to try and bolster with the Machine Gunner A's right over here, but uh, we didn't have the option since we used the Squad Leader B to make that happen. Either way, we like the idea of having the Machine Gunners out, but we're probably going to want to move them over, so if we kept both of these, we could could spawn them over here and move, and then we could shoot immediately. Now the alternative is we could keep both mortars and try to take out this mortar position over here. Now at the moment, they're shooting back at us, and if they were able to hit us, they would take out one of these, and that would definitely impact our ability to do the long-range damage on the Germans that we are hoping to do. With that in mind, I think it's probably better to have multiple shots uh, at trying to take this out. Currently, we know they have one more card in their deck, and there's one more card that they could bolster into, and I think that means we're just going to get rid of one of these machine gunner bees for the initiative. The German player has decided they are going to put forward a fog of war for the uh, initiative, so that means that even though we put a three down, we still get to keep this. Now, that's not a good sign. Well, either they have a really bad hand, or maybe they have a really good hand, but either way, we get to take our actions first. And let's start with our mortar bombardment. We have these two cards right here, so we can begin with this blast attack. That's going to be one die, and we can see the defense for this mortar over here with the target is four plus one. So that means we just need to hit a five or better to make this happen, and we got a nine. All right, well, that did it. I guess we didn't maybe need to keep all of these cards. So that's going to do one casualty to the mortar of the Germans. And that can be found here in their discard pile. They are now regretting having moved their target over. They were thinking maybe they'd get through the deck a little bit faster. And that was probably a mistake for them to not just blast the last time they used this. But hey, we all make mistakes in war, I suppose. So now this is permanently removed. We can now do another mortar action, but we don't really need to target over here anymore because we know that the Germans don't have any more of those cards in their deck. They could bolster another one in, and if we did damage to this, well, when they played that new one, it would just respawn over here. So there's really no reason to attack here anymore. Now, I think let's go ahead and play this to change our target, and let's put it over here. 
if we're able to get a blast in relatively soon before these move out, we could do a decent amount of damage. And if you look out here to the objectives, we need to get to seven. And even if we take all three of these twos, that only gets us to six. That means no matter what, we have to get a little bit deeper into this village. So I think starting to soften up these targets back here is going to be a good idea for us. Lastly, we have our machine gun B, and let's go ahead and spawn this out onto the map. We can put it right here onto the B spawn spot, and we can now take an action. Now we could move, uh, getting ourselves onto maybe this hill, which is a little bit better. That would increase our odds trying to shoot into the town, or we could try to shoot just from this location here. If we were going to target anything, it might be this Rifleman A. We can see they are one, two, three spaces away. So that's three defense, plus one for four, and then plus four gets them to eight. So that means we would roll two dice, and we would be trying to get to uh, an eight or better on either. Now we could of course also do a suppressing fire, and we would roll four dice to try and suppress this target. They haven't actually claimed this zone yet, and if we're able to flip that over, then they will have to waste an entire card just to refresh this, and that might slow them down enough to get one of these scouts in here, or maybe this rifleman, so that we can stop them from doing that before they actually have to kill us. I think that's probably a good idea. Let's go for some suppressing fire on rifleman A. As I said before, we need an eight or better, and we have four chances, and we got one of them. Okay, I'm glad we rolled four dice. That six and seven were not good enough, but this nine is, so that means we can suppress the Rifleman A, flipping them over, and that's going to finish out our turn. The German player can now go, and the first thing they're going to do is use their platoon sergeant to command two cards. That means they can draw two cards from the top of their deck and add those into their hand. And then they're going to play this Rifleman A card. And since we suppressed this token, that means this will just get flipped over for the action. Now, this is looking pretty good for us, but unfortunately, they are now going to play another Rifleman A card. They have a few of them in their deck, and with this one, they are going to do a control action. So maybe we should have just shot down here with a machine gun. Uh, I guess only one of the four dice did what it needed to, and I suppose they might have just drawn into this anyway. So either way, they are now going to take control of this. So our rush into town to try and take this position ended up being a really big mistake, and I'm definitely regretting that now. And we can see here that the Germans are controlling one, two, three, four, five out of the seven objective points that they need to immediately win the game. The next thing they've decided to do is play this platoon guide, and they are going to guide any one of these tokens to move into a spot, and they're going to take this Rifleman A that's been pretty active this round, and they're going to move it right here onto this zone. They have scouted it, so they're allowed to be over here, and it looks like this might start to be a pretty contentious spot. Their last card is the squad leader, and they're going to bolster twice on the B squad. And unfortunately, it looks like they're going to pick up two of these machine gunner Bs, and those will both go into their discard pile. So things are about to get a little bit worse for us, I think. They might have had a pretty lackluster last round, but this round was quite effective for them. They can discard all of these now since they are done. And let's now go into the next round. We have exactly four cards on top of our deck, and then our opponents have three of them. Now that means they can reshuffle up their deck and then draw one more. And now it's time to figure out our initiative. All right, let's look at our hand, and we have a Mortar, a Fog of War, a Scout, and a Squad Leader. Now, these uh, Squad Leaders and Scouts are the same squad, which is definitely nice. We could inspire the Scout back to do multiple actions with it, and I would like to use the Scout to recon this Fog of War out of our deck. It is currently our last one, but if we did that, then we would be using this Mortar as our uh, initiative, which is a 2. Now, that's just one better than a Fog of War, and currently, if our opponent plays a Fog of War, we would win the tie because we already have the initiative. Now, feels pretty lackluster, especially considering this mortar could blast two of these tokens down here and potentially do a decent amount of damage. Now, if we kept this and we kept both of these, that means we are using the Fog of War and we are most likely going to go second. And I'm not sure if that super matters at this point. The Germans were able to sneak in here and actually make that happen. I guess it wasn't really much of a sneak. They definitely knocked us out of this barn here. And uh, the other option we have, of course, is we could just use this squad leader for our overall initiative. If we did that, we could then use the the scout to recon this fog of war out and then draw another card and if we look right now we have no deck and our discard pile is chock full of really good cards so maybe that's actually the best thing for us i like doing the inspire action but yeah let's go ahead and use the squad leader for our initiative and now the German player is going to pick this card, and they have gone with a Fog of War. I don't think they have gotten rid of any of these from their deck at this point, even though they have a couple scouts. Uh, we've been really focusing on that, and it means our deck has uh, allowed us the ability to have the initiative in most rounds so far. So this means our 7 certainly beats their 1, and I'm starting to feel like maybe we should have just played our Fog of War, but either way, that's how this turned out, so we can now start taking actions. 
And the first thing we should definitely do is recon this Fog of War out of our hand and out of the game. So we now have none in our deck, and we might end up scouting some more, and that would put more in our deck, but I like the fact that we are currently a Fog of Warless, and we can now draw a card. Now that means we have to reshuffle up our discard pile, and then we can draw the top card from it, and we have found a Mortar. Okay, well, it looks like we could do this a couple times this round. Uh, we have just these two cards here, so let's start off with a Blast. And our target is right over here. Now we can see that the defense is going to be the same for both of these Riflemen. It's 4 plus 1 or 5. And we have to do this individually. So we can start with the Rifleman B. We need a 5 or better, and we got a 2. Well, unfortunately, the Blast did not hit this one, but now we could do a 5 or better on Rifleman C, and we got a 10. All right, that is definitely a hit. So we will inflict one casualty for the Rifleman C. And it looks like that's going to be here in the German player's deck. And in fact, it was at the very bottom of their deck. So they can now remove this from the game. And now let's go ahead and blast again. Our plan to try and do a lot of damage over here is starting to work out pretty well. We know we need fives, so let's start with the Rifleman B. So let's see how we do. And we got a nine. Awesome. That's going to be another casualty. Now they don't have any in their hand or their discard pile. And when they cruise through their deck, it looks like they don't actually have any of the Rifleman Bs at all. Now they do have some more in reserve, so this is going to remove the token from the board, and now we can blast on this Rifleman C. We again need a 5 or better, and we got a 4. Unfortunately that did not hit, but I think overall that was a pretty good set of mortaring we did this turn. At this point we are now done, so we can discard. And then the German player can take actions, and they're going to start with their Machine Gunner B. Now unfortunately for them, that is going to spawn right where our Mortar target is, but they don't really have a choice about that, and they have a couple of these in their deck, so they might try to move that out soon. Now they can do a move action now, I suppose, or they could attack or suppress. And yeah, they figure we have so many mortars, they're just going to start off by moving, and they're going to go right onto this spot so that we can't sneak in here and try to flip this back over here. That also gives them pretty good odds when they start using their machine gun on all of our forces that are coming in from the northeast. Next up, they're going to play their Rifleman A, and they are going to attack our Scout A. Now we're on the same place, which means we have a defense of 5 plus 1 or 6, and they only get to roll one die with us. So let's see if they get a 6 or better, and they got a 2. Okay, that worked out pretty well for us. And then after they play this Rifleman, they're going to play their Squad Leader A, and they will inspire that Rifleman right back, and they will try to attack again. So once again, they need to hit a 6 or better, and they got a 9. All right, that is going to inflict a casualty on us. So we can come back over here, and we don't have any in our discard pile, and it looks like we also don't have any in our deck. I didn't quite remember that we had lost all of those. We really should have bolstered back some of them, because that means this casualty is going to remove this from the board, and they are just one control action with this Rifleman A from winning the game. They only need two more. And it looks like we are definitely in trouble. We're going to have to get some other units in here as fast as possible, so hopefully we will get some good cards for that on the next turn. That's going to finish the German player's turn out so they can discard these cards. So let's now move into the next round of the game, and things are looking very precarious for us. It looks like the German player will have these four cards, and then we will get these four cards to play with. And when we look at our options, we have a Rifleman B, another Rifleman B, a Squad Leader A, and the Platoon Sergeant. I love seeing this card because that means we can Command 2 and dig deeper into our deck. I suppose maybe instead of doing that last time around, we should have done a bolster to get back some of those uh, scouts. I really just straight up forgot that we needed to get some more of these in. There's a lot to think about going on here. And unfortunately, if we did that now, they would spawn over here and not down here. Now, with these two Rifleman Bs, we do have an opportunity where we could move twice right down here, and that means that the uh, German player would not be able to claim this on their next turn. Now, in order to pull this off, we would have to do that before the German player, which means we would need a pretty good initiative, and I think that getting rid of this squad leader for a 7 initiative is probably going to be the best thing for us. We could get rid of this platoon sergeant for an 8, but I think... I don't think the difference between that's really going to matter. I guess the entire game might hinge on this decision, but I think this is the better call. So we're going to go with this one here. And thankfully, it looks like the Germans are once again going to throw a fog of war into the initiative. We get to go first so much in this game, and a big part of that is because we got these out of our deck. I'm just uh, hoping that that's still going to help us win the game, because right now things aren't looking great for us. Either way, we can now start taking our actions. And the first thing we should definitely do is play this Platoon Sergeant to command twice. I'm not sure what we are going to draw into, but it could definitely change up our plans. Maybe we'll get the Squad Leader B. That could be really good. So this one is the Machine Gunner B, and then the next one is the Squad Leader B. Nice! Okay, well that worked out pretty well, because now uh, not only can we walk in over here, we could also try to do some damage. 
So let's work on that plan. We can start by playing this Rifleman B to move, and we can head right down into this scouted area. And then after that, we can use this Squad Leader B to inspire this back into our hand. Now we can play this one again to move, and that's going to get us right down onto this zone, which is the most important part of the map for the moment. And now I figure let's use our Rifleman B to do some damage, and we are going to try and target the Rifleman A of the Germans. When we focus in, we can see their defense is 4 plus 1 or 5, so we have a 6 out of 10 chance of doing this damage. So let's roll the die, and we got a 5. All right, that's not going to do it, unfortunately, so now we have this machine gunner, and let's see if we can pull this one off with that. We can see that they are currently up here, so their defense would be 4 plus 1 plus 3. So that means it is at 8. Now we could try to do damage to them, or we could try just to suppress them. Although we know they have so many of those cards in their deck that if we suppress them, they will just draw another card and play it. So I think we really do have to push our luck and try to do that damage. So we need to get an 8 or better with one of these two dice, and we got a 0. And now it's not a 0, that's a 10, so that means that is a hit. So we can inflict one casualty on Rifleman A. And that's actually going to knock this card right out of their hand. So that was really close. If we had not done something about it, well, I suppose just getting our Rifleman B in there means they could not have controlled. But getting more of these cards out of the deck means they will be a lot less potent with that specific unit. Okay, we are done with our actions, so the German player can go. And they're going to start off by playing their Machine Gunner B. They are going to attack with it. They're going to hit this Rifleman B because this really is the thorn in the German player's side right now. Our defense is 4, 5, 6, 7 due to the range. So they're going to roll two dice and they are hoping to get a 7 or better on one of them. And they got a 10 and a 9. So that certainly is going to inflict a casualty. And we can check our discard pile and we certainly have those in there. We just used them a lot last turn. So unfortunately, I think we are down to just one Rifleman B in our deck. So it's in a good position, but it might not be strong enough really to pull the game the way we need it to. That finishes the Machine Gunner turn, and that's actually going to end the German player's turn. They have a Fog of War right here, so they're going to discard that. And that was a single action turn for the Germans. So let's now move on into the next round. We can each draw four cards from the top of our decks, and we have three of them. So we can now shuffle this up, and we will get this card here. So let's take a look at our hand, and we have a Mortar, a Machine Gunner B, we've got a Platoon Guide, and another Mortar. Now at this point, I think our deck is about 11 cards, and three of them are Mortars, so it's not too surprising to see both of them at this point. And while the Mortar is quite powerful from a distance, it's not really pulling the game in the direction that I think we need it to. Uh, we've been kind of backsliding for the last many rounds, and I'm having trouble really turning things around. Unfortunately, the Germans are just slowly marching on and really putting on pressure. Now I'm kind of surprised they've essentially forgot about this spot up here, they would have to scout it out to be able to go up there and take this objective, but for now they're fighting down here, and I think that we are certainly going to use a mortar to try and take out this Rifleman C in case they suddenly realize they could just bolster C and try to move in there and take it. Uh, it's possible that their plans haven't really given them that option, and no matter what, we are going to have a mortar in our hand. Now we need to choose, I guess, one of these three effectively that we will use for our initiative. And if we use the platoon guide, we would have an initiative of eight. Now that means we would probably get to go first. And after doing that, we could then use the machine gunner to try and fire down here on the Rifleman A. If we have any hits, then that would uh, remove a card potentially from their hand so that they could not potentially pull off a control action this turn. Another option is we could use the other uh, one of these mortars for the initiative, which would be very slow, which means the German player would get to go first. And then we could use the platoon guide to walk this scout in there so that then they would have to, I guess, kill off that scout B and this rifleman B. Now, if we did that, then it's possible the German player would be able to just be able to take this on their turn before we get to take our turn. So I suppose it's a bit of a coin flip if we want to try and go really fast and uh, not be able to walk in here but try and damage or try to see if they don't have the cards in their hand. I guess at the end of the day, it's probably important to keep the initiative overall. Knocking cards out of their hand is, is certainly a good thing to aim for. We could also do a suppressing fire where we roll even more dice. So yeah, let's go ahead and use the platoon guide with its initiative of eight. And then the German player picked this card out of their hand, and they chose their platoon sergeant. That has an initiative of 9, and that's actually higher than our 8. So that means we didn't really have a choice now that we see this here. No matter what, we were going to go second. So we can flip this over, and that does not bode well for this turn, I think. 
to start their actions off, they're going to play a Scout A, and that one is right over here, and they are going to attack Rifleman B. Now, it looks like we have a defense of 5, so that means this one die needs to be a 5 or better to hit, and they got a 0. Okay, well, that is actually a 10, of course, and that means that is a casualty. So we have to look and try to find that one. It's not in our discard pile, so we can look in here, and there is our final Rifleman B knocked out of the game. With this successful scout attack action done, they are now going to follow that up with a sniper. So this is looking even worse. Their sniper is currently right here, so that means they are a range of two away, and they are going to attack this Rifleman B. So that means we have a defense of four, five, six, seven, but the sniper gets to roll three dice. So that means on a seven or better, they will take this token right off the board, and they got a zero, a ten, sorry, and an eight. So that is two hits, and again, you just need one or more. So unfortunately, that is going to knock the Rifleman off, and after this successful sniper attack, their third card is indeed one of their numerous Rifleman A's. They can put this down and do a control action, and since there is none of us over here, that means they can flip this over, and just like that, they now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, objective points, and that is exactly what they needed, and that is going to end the game immediately. I suppose this means we did not live up to the counterparts of the context where the U.S. actually did take over this town eventually, and with that immediate defeat on our side from the Germans, we have now finished our full two-player game of Undaunted Normandy. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this playthrough, especially considering it was not particularly close there for the last third to a half of the game. Now, I put all of the blame on myself for that. I think as the U.S. player, we made some pretty bad decisions, and uh, part of that is because I'm not super familiar with the game. This is my third play, but it is my first time with this scenario, and it's my first time playing with the mortar unit, uh, also the first time with a sniper and the platoon guide, so there was some new stuff going on that it was fun to kind of feel out, and because of this inexperience and just bad play, we had a situation where the German player was able to slowly just push us out of this town and essentially win like that. Now, I think the uh, thing that we really should have done was utilized the asymmetric build-out of this map. We start the game at the top of a hill, and of course the German player had the uh, mortar on the top of a hill, which is a problem, but we figured out a way to take care of that in the middle stages of the game, and I think we should have done that earlier to try and clean that out, and then maybe stay up at the top of the hill or near the hill for longer and try to soften up the German player as they they were trying to take over those objectives. They started with some really easy objective points that they were able to get, and I think we should have just allowed them to pick up those objectives as we really fleshed out our deck and positioned ourselves better to just weaken them before actually charging in like we did. Um, those charges were just a really bad idea. I guess one of them we got to keep until the very end of the game, but um, at the end of the day, I just kind of wish I had played it a little bit slower to see how it would have evolved, um, just playing it smarter. Now, it is worth mentioning that there is another way that this game could have ended. Um, if both players become pinned, then the game ends and you count how many objective points each person has, and the person with the most wins. Now, the idea of pinning is not something that really came up in these videos, and you get pinned once all of your riflemen are no longer on the board and no longer in your bank or your deck. Once that happens, you cannot control anything for the rest of the game, and if one player is pinned and the other person isn't, then you keep playing until they're both pinned or one person gets their main objective. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are uh, 11 different other scenarios in this game box, and not all of them have both players trying to vie for the same objective points. Some of them have situations where the German player just needs to pin the US player to win, and the US player just needs to get one objective point. So you have situations where maybe the US player is running across the map trying to get over there, and the German player is trying to defend while also taking everybody out. And of course, the US player needs to try and soften things up in that situation as well. So there are a uh, number of different ways this could have played out, and obviously in this specific playthrough, I wish we had played it a little bit better. We would have gotten into the late game and seeing more of the attrition, although we were in a situation where all of our Rifleman Bs were out, and I think given a few more rounds, we would have seen more uh, uh, entire squads, or I guess tokens, that were just completely cleared out of the game that could no longer come back on. So I think at this point, that's going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.